Why is it for us mortals, the essence of all beginning somehow always lies wrapped in a legend? Legends, especially about lands. Lands, which seem to have existed even before time, acquire in these legends a reassuring familiarity. Sometimes, not just a beginning, but also a preordained end. Kashmir, for instance, was once upon a time an enormous lake, Satisar, home to sage Kashyap's progeny, who were being terrorized by a demon residing in its waters. So, sage Kashyap besieged Lord Vishnu for help, which he gave in his Varahavtar, by draining the waters at Barmul or Baramula, killing the demon and creating Kashapmir or Kashmir in all its glory. So enamored were the gods and goddesses upon seeing this beautiful land that they decided to live there for all times to come. Ladakh too, according to legend, was once a vast landlocked sea, which perhaps explains the appearance of long stretches of sand dunes in this otherwise lunar landscape. Of course, this was long before this cold desert became a citadel of Buddhism. Buddhism, which later is said to have traveled from Ladakh to Tibet, safely in the beak of a crow. The origins of the city of Jammu are no less fascinating. It is said that once Raja Jambu Lochan, while out on a hunt, saw a tiger and a goat drinking water side by side at a stream and immediately decided to build a city on such hallowed soil. Myth or reality, fact or fiction. Legends refuse to be held hostages to facts in our lives they remain alive in our collective memories. With each generation inheriting them as part of a legacy and bequeathing them to the next. Till the legends become as tangible in our midst as these stones. Stones, big and small, which seem to have seen everything, heard everything which are strewn across the landscape of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. Much like the legends which dot its mindscape. Timeless, ageless stones. Stones which carry within their lairs secrets of times gone by. Tell stories. Finally, 
turning into milestones for the eons already gone and foundations for those yet to come. Much like the patient stone. No one really knew how old the stone was. Perhaps not even the stone. Nor did anyone really care. Somehow it seemed to have been there forever. It had seen Lake Satisar being drained and Kashmir being born. Many a mighty empire's rise and fall it had silently observed. It saw King Gonanda the first assume power 20 years before the Mahabharata and fight alongside the Kauravas. It saw many other kings come and go, their lives and antics faithfully recorded by poet Kalhana in his Raja Tarangini, The River of Kings. Some left footprints deeper than others, like Emperor Ashoka, who built Srinagar, the city of his dreams, dedicated to Goddess Sri, or Lakshmi, ensuring eternal prosperity for the city. Then, as in other parts of India, came Buddhism, bringing with it a new sensibility, grace and beauty. Visible till today in the murals of Ajanta and Elora and also at Alchi in Ladakh, these world-renowned paintings adorning the walls at the Choskor at Alchi are one of the few remaining examples of pre-Tibetan Buddhist art in Ladakh today. The simplicity of Buddha's teachings Episodes from his life are revealed in sublime beauty at Alji, almost in identical brush strokes to those at Elora, perhaps even created by the same hands, as artists from central India had come to make these beautiful images. They, however, were not the only ones who came. Others too came to adorn the monasteries and temples being made in the name of Buddha, like the craftsmen of Chilling. Chilling is a tiny village along the Zanskar River, a village of six homes, stunning beauty and nearly impossible to reach. Legend has it that the ancestors of the present inhabitants of Chilling were invited by the then king of Ladakh from Nepal to come and make the sacred metal statues and utensils for prayers required in the monasteries. They chose Chilling as their new home. Sonam, his brother Rigzin and his father too have heard this legend and know that the utensils they make are unique but other than that know nothing of Nepal. Just as the karmic wheel turns full circle constantly nudging life to evolve and change. Just so, a young lad growing up in the rice fields of Kerala was nudging its intellect and conscience to understand the basic tenets of Hinduism, yet again, like many before him. The Adi Shankaracharya decided to begin his journey from the abode of Shiva, and so traveled up north to the Himalayas. Here in Srinagar, atop the Shankracharya hill, a little below the Shankracharya temple, in this tiny cave, 
he sat deep in meditation. In these calm and serene surroundings, he internalized non-duality, monism. Confident of having fully imbibed the essence of Hinduism, he set forth to enlighten the rest. For centuries, what the priests and scriptures preached through ritual began to permeate into the realms of common domain. The people's language, their metaphors and idioms became for the first time also the voice of religion because of the bhakti movement across the country. Epitomizing which were the vaks of Lal Dev, the saint poet of Kashmir. Lal Dev's magic lay in perhaps her ability to express simply the profound and the sacred for ordinary people to understand and relate to. The cycle of births, rebirths, the immortality of the soul, life as an eternal continuous flow of consciousness, she simply described as we have been in the past, in future also we shall be. Forever the sun rises and sets, forever Shiva creates and dissolves and creates again. But perhaps her greatest contribution lay in preparing the soil for the great tidal wave of religious syncretism that was to follow. For Islam had arrived. But unlike in other parts of the country, it did not come accompanied by a sword here, but like a gentle breeze, slowly turning the temples into khankas. The wise men who had left their homes in Central Asia, often because of religious persecution, felt safe in their adopted land, safe enough to preach their faith. They spoke of one truth, one God, love for fellow beings, of humility and truthfulness. This to the locals sounded not new but familiar, not different but akin to the basic tenets of their own faith of monistic Shaivism. Lal Ded had said, Shiva abides in all that is everywhere. Then why discriminate between Hindu and Muslim? Wisdom lies in knowing thine own self. Lal Ded, in her spiritual vision, had sown the seed. It was now left for Nundrishi, her spiritual heir, and also patron saint of Kashmir to translate that vision into reality. A task which he accomplished with perfection. For essentially, Nundrishi was a people's saint, an icon both for the new faith Islam, which was taking root, and also for the soil in which it was taking root. Soil which carried within it centuries of wisdom and spirituality of the pre-existing religion, Hinduism. He enshrined within himself as a living example, the best of both for his followers to emulate, ensuring there was no clash or collision between the two. He said, only when you have united Shiva and the void within you, will you have offered the true and inner namaz. So till today, irrespective of religion, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, all pray to him as their very own. Patient Stone rejoiced in this intermingling of faiths, cultures and religions. This mutual respect for the other 
was perhaps best evident when Guru Nanak Dev Ji, founder of Sikhism, visited Ladakh and was lovingly called Guru Lama by the locals. However, it was not just religion which was being enriched with all this intermingling. All aspects of life, art, architecture, cuisine, were also going through a similar process of interaction and synthesis. A distinct style of painting emerged in Basoli around the 1630s. Its techniques were that of the Mughal school, but its style and spirit were its very own. Unlike the Mughal miniatures, these paintings reflected the beauty of the artist's environment, the landscape of the Shivalik hills, their flora and fauna. They also derived inspiration from the eroticism of Shingar literature in Sanskrit and Hindi poetry. What really set them apart, however, was the bold use of primary colors, which were made from stones found in the river flowing close by. Colors which also came from flowers, trees and bushes all around the artist. Another unique feature was the distinctive shape of the eye, the Basoli eye. Soon these paintings were making waves and Basoli became the cradle for all the other schools of hill art that emerged later. A constant integration of many such nuances of different yet familiar, unique yet part of a whole, were creating an exotic weave of myriad threads throughout this period. But then, this centuries of harmony came in for a rude shock. Independence came, and with it, the map of India changed forever. The Indian subcontinent was plunged into a vortex of communal violence. Kashmir, however, remained an oasis of peace. Mahatma Gandhi ne kaha ke Kashmir ne mujhe roshni ki kiran nazar aayi. Kashmir jo hai, yahan shanti hai, yahan aman hai. Ye Mahatma Gandhi ji ka statement hai bapu ka. Kashmir hamesha se secular raha hai. Obviously, then the idea that religion could ever be a basis of a geographical division was not only alien, but also unacceptable to the majority. Two nation theory ke tha. Red and green, two distinct colors representing two distinct faiths, Hinduism and Islam. But in these places of worship in Jammu and Kashmir, for centuries the two had lived, not in acrimony, but in perfect harmony. A truth which would color any decision taken by the people or the politicians. Soon, however, this uncompromising belief in secularism came under intense and renewed pressure from those opposing it. But you see, the Pakistan, instead of standing, it started they came raiders and. Or piche unki Pakistan ki fojen thi aage kawali unhon rakhe. Hamla walon ka ruk tha ki wo chahte the Kashmir ko Pakistan ke saath jod de. This wanton display of terror only strengthened the people's resolve to sever themselves from a value system which believed in using violence and brutality to impose itself. Pakistan ke khilaf ek one and all Kashmiri. Greatest folly of Pakistan that they sank those greatest. Finally, the people's will prevailed and Maharaja Hari Singh signed the accession papers. Accession was signed. He signed and he said, sent the paper before the, the troops arrived. Once accession was signed, the Indian army landed in Srinagar to defend what was now an integral part of the sovereign republic of India. Pakistan ke halat ko dekar, kathen Sheikh sahab ka faisla durusta. Hindustan chal raha, sarra marra uncha hai. And one is proud to be a part of the country. The patient stone saw the terror, the brutality, in helpless pain. Ravani, 
اس وقت پہلی دفعہ دیکھا کہ انسان کس قدر کس حد تک ظالم ہو سکتا ہے but also held its head high at the display of courage, dignity, and a fight for principles. Sher Kashmir ka kya reisha? Hindu Muslim, Sikh Taj. Zindabad, Zindabad. Or logo ne apna haat se jane ni diya secularism ko. Wo pyar mahabbat jaise maine aapko kaha, wo jo insano mein hona chahiye, bilay imtiyaz mazhab ki liye jaise aap kehiye, wo chiz thi ya. Peace returned to Jammu, Kashmir, and Ladakh. The forward areas had paid a heavy price, but soon life began to limp back to normal. Once again, men, women and children thronged the khanqas and ziyarats in thanksgiving. Once again, the ancient walls of the khanqas resounded with the sacred chants of Durud. In a practice unique to the valley, verses from the holy book are read aloud and together by the entire congregation. Once again, the nimble fingers of craftspeople created magic. The materials and designs reflecting centuries of confluence of crisscrossing influences. The farmers toiled in their fields. The vases conjured royal feasts, the mouth-watering aromas of which reflected influences and ingredients from pan-Indian kitchens, making many a wedding feast heavenly. Also clamoring for a slice of this heaven were the hordes of tourists who arrived each summer in thousands, ensuring employment for many. Indeed, it seemed almost too good to be true. And sure enough, as in the original paradise, soon a serpent reared its ugly head. Ill winds blew. Scorching everything that came in their way. Homes, which for centuries had stood side by side, sharing joys and sorrows, never questioning their inmates' faith or religion, suddenly were safe no more. Kashmir has been a place of rishis and munis and Sufi saints. People who are here had only one common belief that the humanity is above all religions. Where there had been joy, cheer, life, a feeling of brotherhood, now remained maimed bodies and numb minds. Vacant eyes of innocence, wondering why they were being terrorized on their own soil and that too by outsiders who knew nothing of their pluralistic culture, their democratic traditions, and had no respect for either. We went through a very traumatic period. Death and destruction became the order of the day. Those who could left. Those who could not stayed through the agony. Their silent tears of anguish, however, remained inadequate to wash away the blood. It was very bad. I will tell you that the people who ate in the house were eating in the house. It means that there was no mother and mother. It was a shame from this. This is the history جو تحریک جس کو نام دیا تھا انہوں نے جہاد کا وہ فساد بن گیا For more than life, more than limb, more than dignity and self-respect what was under siege was a value system a set of beliefs 
certain principles. In fact, each and every secular pluralistic ideal which held the social fabric together. While on the one side was freedom, the right to choose, a plurality in thought and deed, an abiding respect for the other, on the other was intolerance, terror and brutality. So violent and vicious was the onslaught that it seemed to wipe out centuries of peaceful coexistence, harmony and development. Violence has this unfortunate ability to permeate each layer of life and impact it. The rivers, the forests, all paid a heavy price. Destruction came in myriad ways. When the 700-year-old shrine of Charari Sharif was destroyed in May 95 by foreign militants, the fire also destroyed the entire town, built almost completely of wood. 1,400 homes burnt with the shrine and more than 250,000 cubic feet of timber had to be made available immediately. Thousands of trees were cut on a war footing to rebuild the shrine along with the entire town. Today, as the locals work hard to regenerate their forests, they are justifiably proud. And women and children have suffered the most. Violence also, almost always, extracts the greatest cost from women. Not only did they have to live with the loss of loved ones, become sole bread earners, to support themselves and their families in the absence of men, but were also forced to follow diktats issued to them to become subservient and invisible. For women who had always been at the forefront of society, nurtured in freedom and equality, this was no easy task. They defied these diktats as best as they could, working to sustain themselves and their own. हमारे इस्लाम में भी ये है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है कि इतनी बंदिश है कि हमें बुरके में रहना नहीं टाइम की जो डिमांड है हमें उसके साथ साथ भी चलना है हाँ अपने जो अपना ये है कल्चर वगैरह उसका भी ख्याल रखना है हमें बावज बेशक वो ख्याल रखना है इसमें कोई मुझे शर्मनाकी नहीं है शर्मनाकी उन चीजों से है कि किसी के आगे हाथ फैला उसमें शर्मनाकी है किसी के आगे झुक जाओ वो शर्मनाकी है मुझे नहीं लगता अपने पैरों पे खड़े होके खुद काम करना इसमें कोई शर्मनाकी है चाहे फिर लोग कुछ भी बोलें Bravely taking a stand against all odds even if they belong to a minuscule minority ये जा रहे हैं कि हमारा जो पुराना भाई जा रहा है वो कायम रहे Never the weaker sex quietly and with dignity these women asserted their rights to fight their own battles against terror. Why is it that harmony of any kind is a threat to terror of all kinds? 
Vathura, a sleepy little village on the outskirts of Srinagar, has been since eternity an artist's village, a living repository of all the folk traditions of the valley. जो इंग्लिश जबान में बोलते हैं नाटक सब कुछ इधर सब आदमी जानते हैं सजू से ये लोग यही काम करते हैं इसके बगैर कोई काम नहीं करते इन एवरी होम एज सुन एज अ चाइल्ड इज ओल्ड इन टू वॉक एंड होल्ड एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट ही सेंट टू एन उस्ताद और अ टीचर टू बिकम इज शागिर दैट इज अ स्टूडेंट बट स्ट्रिक्टली ओनली बॉयज Vathora for centuries of remembered history resounded with the melodious notes of Sufiana Gayaki music praising the almighty music patronized by the greatest of sufi saints as a sure way of attaining spirituality is ko naam hai bajbi sama ye ek ibadat hai riyazat hai jis tarike se mandir mein jaate hain masjid mein jaate hain gurdwar mein jaate hain But when terror struck music which had been sung in Allah's name was ordered to stifle each note and become silent for being anti and un-islamic and this too was done in Allah's name centuries old instruments were packed and the silence became deafening har ek door mein ye kuch kuch प्रॉब्लम होते हैं मगर बात तो ये है हमने तो कोशिश किया रियाज जारी रखा तो फिर तो इसमें सिर्फ यही ख्याल रखा बस आपकी मदद है अल्लाह की मदद है एंड विद द पीपल्स रिजॉल्व वथोरा टुडे अगेन सिंग्स द ऑल माइटीज प्रेजेस परहैप्स देयर इन लाइज द ग्रेटेस्ट आयरनी violence which had vowed to finish every nuance of this pan indian ethos of syncretism tolerance secularism pluralism was ultimately silenced by these very forces हम भी इसलिए आए हैं कि हमें फिर इंसान हमें बारह सालों से सिर्फ हमने यही देखा है और कुछ नहीं इसलिए ये वोट डाला है कि हमें इंसाफ चाहिए हम खुद हैं हम खुद वोट डालने आए हैं ना ही दहशत ना ही खोफ कुछ नहीं अमन तरक्की के लिए एज द साइलेंट मेजॉरिटी रोज टू क्वाइटली एंड विद डिग्निटी असर्ट इट्स वॉइस परपेट्रेटर्स ऑफ टेरर हैड टू रिसीड इन साइलेंस एंड व्हाट ऑफ द पेशेंट स्टोन maybe it had seen the silver lining along the dark cloud long before anyone else had and also probably knew all along that ultimately terror can achieve only so much innocence can be brutalized for only so long till fear steps into fearlessness for a fabric woven over millennia with myriads of threads of many a hue and color strengthened by common belief and purpose has the ability to withstand many a force of terror and silence it aaj to jo yamudawai nadari आज तो जो यमुदवाई नादरी वज तो खा हम शफाई बीमारी या अमीरे 
Ray Kabir Dastam Bagir Dastima Bagir Ya Amiri Kabir Dastima Bagir Ya Dastima Bagir Ya